Hey, it's me, the NPC. So, the Super Nintendo Classic Edition is happening. Why didn't Nintendo reveal it at E3 and instead just unceremoniously announce it on Twitter two weeks later? Because Nintendo logic. Now, I did my own prediction video on what I expected from the system. It only makes sense that I go over what I got right and what I got wrong. Just to make sure we're all caught up, the roster of games is Super Mario World, The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, Super Metroid, F-Zero, Donkey Kong Country, Kirby Superstar, Kirby Dream Course, Super Punch-Out, Super Mario Kart, Earthbound, Super Mario RPG, Final Fantasy III, or VI technically, Secret of Mana, Street Fighter II Hyper Fighting, Mega Man X, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Super Castlevania IV, Contra III The Alien Wars, Yoshi's Island, Star Fox, and even Star Fox II. What I got right is pretty straightforward. Just about every game on there is one I brought up in my own list. There are a few very notable exceptions, but I'll get into those in just a bit. The biggest difference is the number of games on the system. Can't say I'm too surprised by this, going for 30 was always a generous estimate on my part, and I figured the final count was going to be closer to 20. Let's first talk about some of the exclusions on the actual system compared to my predictions. There are plenty that I'm not surprised didn't make it, like Mystical Ninja, Pack Attack, Super Star Wars. If I had shot for 20 originally, those most likely would have been left out of my list as well. Chrono Trigger doesn't really surprise me much either, and that's probably the only game I kind of regret putting so high up on my own list. Not because it's not good enough, but because it's actually too good. Square Enix knows exactly what that game is worth, and they still managed to find ways to sell it at a premium roughly 20 years later. Expecting them to package it as a part of a plug-and-play system was far too optimistic of me. No Gradius 3, but the Super Nintendo isn't really remembered for its shoot-'em-ups. They also went with Hyper Fighting instead of New Challengers for the Street Fighter rep. That actually does make a lot of sense considering one of the current games for the Switch is the latest Street Fighter 2 port, and having a larger gap between that standalone title and what gets included on the Classic is very logical. You want to play as Kami or Fei Long? Well, you're going to have to pony up the extra bucks to get the standalone release, or you know, get one of the other countless re-releases of this game that released before this and are much cheaper right now. I'm guessing that's the same reason why Kirby Avalanche wasn't included, so it doesn't impede the sales of Puyo Puyo Tetris. They also went with the original Donkey Kong Country over the sequel. I still say that Diddy's Conquest is the better game, but the first is the more iconic, and I understand the reasoning of going with it. For the ones that did take me by surprise, Pilot Wings is a big one. That's the first entry in a first-party franchise with a decent history behind it. However, it just didn't make the cut, likely because it's just a bit too niche. I really expected Harvest Moon to make it on, but it looks like Nintendo wanted to keep the club very small on this one. The only third-party games on the Classic come from Capcom, Konami, and Square Enix, so Natsumi just didn't get an invite, apparently. Speaking of Capcom, the biggest exclusion of the bunch is easily Final Fight. There is not a single game in the Final Fight trilogy on here, and that is just weird. As I've said before, the SNES port of the first game has a lot going against it, and I wasn't holding out hope for that one in particular, but I did expect at least one of the sequels. Plus, the SNES was pretty well known for its beat-em-ups, so not seeing a single brawler on the classic is just bizarre. Finally, that brings us to the surprising inclusions. First up is Kirby's Dream Course, which I did bring up in my own plans, but only as a backup option. The fact that this made it onto the system over Pilot Wings, Final Fight 3, and even Kirby's Avalanche is kind of surreal to me. I mean, it's Kirby Golf, basically. It's not really what golf fans want out of a golf game, it's not really what Kirby fans want out of a Kirby game, but it is still a decent game in its own right, so it's not exactly a bad inclusion. However, the biggest surprise of the lineup is without a doubt, an entire trilogy of Super FX games. Star Fox, Yoshi's Island, and even Star Fox 2. How? I thought for sure that we'd never see these games again over Nintendo's relationship with Argonaut, and yet here we are. Getting Star Fox and Yoshi's Island to see the light of day again is a miracle in and of itself. Not only that, but the holy grail of Star Fox 2 is finally seeing commercial release for the first time in history. That alone is going to get a lot of collectors on this system. All told, this is an incredible lineup of games. Even the few oddballs are still great titles, and this is an all-star lineup of 16-bit goodness. Just... please... 
push these out by the millions and let supply actually come close to meeting demand this time. Please.